Today I'm going to tell you the story of the youngest serial killer in Latin American history. Before going to the next story, remember that I bring you this story translated from Spanish with all the information and details there is. So you help me a lot by sharing this content and giving a like for the algorithm to continue recommending us so I can bring you more videos like this. Finally, let's get it started. We are located in Ecuador more specifically in the town of Sucumbios. February 28, 1976 was the day Juan Fernando Hermosa Suarez was born. His mother was a laundress and did not have enough resources to care for Juan. So he was adopted when he was one year old by Rafael Hermosa and Zoila Suarez. This was a marriage that could not have children, they were a good couple with a good financial resources. After a while, when Juan was seven year old, a 14 year old girl appeared at his house claiming to be Juan's sister. Her name was Gloria and she revealed to Juan that he was adopted. So her adopted parents had no choice but to tell him the truth. Juan at the age of nine will become a more rebellious child than the average. At just that age, he already enjoyed killing animals, mostly cats, and he took the corpses to his school to scare his classmates. So finally, which is why he was expelled from his school. Rafael, his adopted father, traveled a lot for work. And that made Juan spend more time alone. Already at the age of 13, he will meet other boys older than him, then he will commit two crimes such a car theft. These boys were so stupid that they were only cuffed on their second robbery. Therefore, Juan was sent to a juvenile correctional from which he escaped. When he was 15 years old, he was sent to another correctional facility for stealing a bicycle. In this place is where he meets Luis Anibal Quispe, who was a boy who lived with his alcoholic stepfather, who beat his mother and abused his sister. So they soon become best friends and devise a plan to escape. This plan consisted of chasing the guard of the entrance with buckets full of poop. Yeah, how did you hear that? Poo. At this point, the plan worked for them, as the guard ran to protect himself from not being showered with the poop and thus they managed to escape. During the day, these two will go to the park to steal the children's bikes. Yeah, the children's bikes. And with the money they got from the bikes, they will pay a taxi driver to teach them how to drive. Their first robbery was a Hyundai accent, and <laughs> ain't it well. Until they both overturn it on the road, but fortunately for them, no one saw them and they can escape from the place. So they soon escalated their auto theft business until they bought a 90mm gun, and at this fact, at this point, changed forever the life of these two. That night, both boys went to a club, and they saw a well-known thief in the club who was nicknamed the Cholo. He presumed that he had a lot of jewelry and a lot of money because he was the leader of the neighborhood, and Juan and the Cholo talked that night. But a few hours later, Juan and Luis asked for a taxi that will take them to a remote place, and when the taxi driver stopped, Juan took his weapon, and although the taxi driver did not resist the robbery, Juan shot him, committing his first murder. The boys got into the taxi and drove it to the Cholo's house. When Juan and Luis arrived, they told him that they had a house ready to rough, since that was the Cholo's specialty, so he could help them. So the three of them got into the taxi to Cholo's house, but this was a lie. Juan and Luis's plan was to rough Cholo of what he busted of having. When they arrived at the supposed house, Juan took out his weapon and had to shoot the child seven times to kill him, since the child resisted with each shot Juan gave him. Juan always told Luis that he did not want him to become a murderer, because Juan said that he himself had the cold blood and malice to commit these murders. After killing Cholo, Juan and Luis returned to their victim house and, of course, to rob his house. They also killed his wife, who was resting inside. They completely emptied the house, leaving only the corpse of the woman and a bed with the four crying children who had been orphaned that night. From this fact, Juan will continue to climb in the business and form a band of other boys who call themselves La Pandilla del Terror, which means the Terror Gang. All of this is still at the age of 15. They dedicated to killing taxi drivers, up to number of 10 taxi murders. Charlie is the name of the person who got wants her, and Charlie was a transvestite. A party night, she invited him to his house along with other friends, 
And here, after drinking a lot of alcohol, Juan in front of all her friends took out his gun and killed Charlie with five shots, just for fun. At this point, it was December 1991, and Penny was taking over the streets of Quito. Taxi drivers began to protest for their safety. The situation had escalated so much that the security representative of IOC, Intelligence Operations Center, gave confidential instruction to all taxi drivers on what to do to be alert. So, days later, in another taxi robbery, Juan, Luis and three other gang members will try to commit the same robbery and murder. But this time, everything went wrong, since the taxi driver was alert to the security situation and noticed the Juan's gun. So when Juan took out his 9mm, he only managed to shoot him in the leg. But the taxi started his car and he escaped. At the hospital, he gave his version of what happened and nobody could believe the suspects were minors. In January 1992, the police were conducting an inspection to find the suspects and they heard shots a few streets away. On alert, the officers went to see what was happening and found a taxi with minors passing by. So when they found themselves cornered, the boys began to run in all directions and could only catch one of them. He was Luis Anibal Quispe. With all the information they obtained from Luis, they identified the other suspects, and an undercover police officer followed in their footsteps. The police organized a scam where an undercover agent posed as a taxi driver. So when did the boys stop him, they were robbing, but the other agents will have already surrounded them, thus capturing the entire gang of terror. But now we have a plot twist. Juan was not there. That day, he had not want to leave his house, since he still lived with his adoptive parents. But it wasn't too long before the boys spoke of Juan as their leader, and on January 14, 1992, several officers ran Juan's house and entered through the skylight. But Juan noticed and took out his gun, and that's when the shooting started. Soila, his adoptive mother, would receive 19 shots, which caused her death. And Juan tried to escape, throwing a fragmentation grenade at the police, but after a chase, they managed to arrest him. When he arrived at the police station, Juan's first statements to the media were as follows. I want to make it clear that my name is Juan Fernando Hermosa Suarez and I will be 16 years old on February 28. He probably said this knowing that he could not be judged as a legal age. And no one in the media could believe that the fear monster was a child. Juan became very famous and was even paid to do interviews. Juan took all the blame so as not to affect the other member of his gang until he was finally sentenced for 22 murders to spend only 4 years in the Youth Orientation Center. Because, unbelievably, this is, was the only maximum sentence for a minor in Ecuador. But as expected, here again Juan will escape killing the only guard who kept watch at the night with another contraband pistol. He escaped to Colombia and lived in the city of Bogota. But again, they found and arrested him, put in a high security provision. He didn't spend even four years here and incredibly, they released him. Everyone in Ecuador could not believe it and was outraged by the loss of their country. So they insulted and beat him in the street. Until February 28, 1996, found Juan's body on the banks of a river. The day of his death was his 20th birthday. The body was unrecognizable, since it had been shot, beaten, run over, and had his hands tied with a wire. Carajo, pues, carajo, carajo. A quien quiera, a cual carajo. A mí me está atendiendo con el 
So I hope you like this story and if you want me to continue bringing this type of video, please subscribe. Finally, please leave me in comments what other story you would like me to tell. See you.